hi friends welcome to the new segment so in this segment we will be talking about forced vibration so in the previous lecture we talked about different types of excitations today we will be talking about only one type of excitations for uh, like next six to ten videos or six to eight minimum videos we will be only talking about harmonic excitations these type of excitations are important because we come across a lot of examples uh, real life examples where excitation will be of harmonic type that means um, as I have shown here this example so this is a simple simple uh, very simple uh, single degree of freedom system as you can see here if f of t can be written as let's say f of t can be written as some f0 f0 is a constant value cos omega t that means I'm applying a harmonic excitation oh, if it is cos omega t then I should start from 1 so it will be like this so omega is a frequency so if um, this is my f and this is my time so if I consider the time period of this function it will be 1 by t right uh, this is time period time period will be 2 pi by omega if i'm right yeah i think i'm right <laughs> t equal to 2 pi by omega fine now uh, the key um, assumptions that we make when we want to compute the response of the system let's say now there is a force acting on the system now i want to compute what is the response of my system against this harmonic excitation so one of the very basic assumption is that since my excitation force is having a frequency of omega i am assuming my response will also have the same omega so this is the assumption that we make against harmonic excitations so we will assume we will assume one functional relationship for x of t like this c1 sin omega t plus c2 cos omega t so we are assuming that the system will be also vibrating with the same frequency now uh, let me ask this very simple question you, from uh, simply a thought experiment what uh, the c1 and c2 are constant if it, it's they seem to be the constant so my question is what variables do you think on which these c1 and c2 will be depending so the c1 and c2 will tell us a lot about the displacement so my question to you is on what variables shown here you have an excitation force here you have so many system parameters um, so on what on which of these variables do c1 and c2 will be depending on hold your thought for a while pause my video think over it and then come back so the answer is c1 and c2 will definitely have a dependence on the magnitude of the excitation force which is f0 as shown here so this is the magnitude of your excitation force so c1 has will be depending on the magnitude of the force maybe as when the magnitude of excitation force increases your displacement should also increase should be increasing and the another key system parameter or input parameter on which this c1 and c2 will be depending on is the frequency of external excitation and definitely there will be also functions of the system parameters k and f they should be from common sense so c1 and c2 they are constants and they can be written as a function of all this all there should be finally once we solve this problem they, it should be a function of all these parameters so we will cross check this towards the end once we do all the maths we will come back here and see whether it is right or wrong cool good uh, we can go ahead okay so let's start solving it now the differential equation will be mx double dot plus cx dot 
plus kx is equal to my f0 cos omega t this is the differential equation now i am assuming x is equal to c1 sin omega t plus c2 cos omega t so my x dot will be c1 omega cos omega t plus c2 minus sin omega t i am missing out an omega so i will put it here similarly if you want we need x double dot as well because we need to plug it uh, in this equation so we need x double dot as well so computing x1 double dot it will be minus omega square c1 sin omega t i think i'm not making any mistake here then what else then c2 will be here again omega square minus cos omega t so now um, we have let's say here now we have three set of equations or three set um, of equations for x velocity and acceleration now just taking this equation over here and dividing throughout by m we will help it will help us to arrive at this kind of an expression where x double dot plus c divided by m x dot plus k by m x is equal to f0 by m cos omega t simple algebra now let's evaluate one one term each like what are the let's evaluate the coefficient separately c by m c by m can be written like c divided by 2 root km fine you are, we have to multiply with 2 root k m and then there is a m here so this quantity c divided by 2 root km since 2 root k is my this is my critical viscous damping coefficient so c divided by critical damping coefficient will give me my zeta value let me write zeta a bit more nicely so this is zeta 2 zeta now whatever you are seeing here whatever you are seeing here this root term will cancel with the m here so we are left with 2 root of k by m which is nothing other than which is nothing other than the natural frequency of the system so this is this can be written as 2 zeta omega n this is omega n whole square now coming to this term let me erase all this stuff here we know that now this this can be written as 2 zeta omega n leave it now hold your thought uh, i have a question for you let's say f0 by k what does this tell you about the system hold your thought and then come back this will actually tell us what is the static deflection in the system what is the static deflection in the system if the force was not applied like this let's say this is the amplitude this is the f0 value but if the force would have applied like this like simply no variation like a constant force this is time this is time I, every time i mean whenever i draw figures explicitly the exact is time otherwise i specify it explicitly so f0 divided by k will give me the delta static or what would, would have been the static deflection if the force was acting like this now f0 m can be rewritten as f0 m can be rewritten as f0 by k multiplied by k by m so this is my delta static times omega n square so to put it in a nutshell i modified all these constants so 
now i have a new differential equation no it's, a, it's the same differential equation but the, but the coefficients are modified so this is the new differential equation or the, sorry again this is the differential equation with modified coefficients and we assume that x is equal to this one we have two coefficients to evaluate so the best way to do it is we need to have two equations to solve so we will plug this here once we plug this here then we will get an equation which will look like something like this so i'm I, i'm not in, interested to explain in detail i will we will get some a collection of coefficients here times sin omega t plus another set of coefficients here times cos omega t equal to our right hand side right hand side is del delta static omega n square cos omega t so here we have a few set of coefficients here also we have a set of coefficients few coefficients here now looking at this equation whatever is inside in this coefficient it should be equal to zero because in on the right hand side we don't have any terms on in with the in sign so the best thing is if i call this um, if i call this uh, coefficient set one or whatever so this set of coefficients coefficient one i would call it then this is coefficient two then actually coefficient one will look like this it will be looking like it will look like one one minus omega square divided by omega n square omega n square times our c1 minus 2 omega by sorry 2 i can write it at 2 zeta omega n times c2 should be zero let me differentiate this portion from this so you get i think you got the concept here we we have to we have to enforce this coefficient to be zero this is that coefficient if you sum collect all the terms with the sign term in it then this will be all the coefficients of this which will come here we have to force that to zero because on the right hand side we don't have anything in terms of sign we have only a cos omega t term and now if i write the coefficient two it will look like this it will be looking like 2 zeta omega n c1 plus 1 minus omega square divided by omega n square c2 should be equal to my delta static omega n square make sense now if you look at this very carefully we have two set of linear equations and we have only two coefficients to figure out what we we, we have only two unknowns in this equation c1 and c2 now we can do this this is slightly complicated i agree with that there is a much simpler way to do that but if if you want to appreciate the other way which i will be proposing in a, in the next video or so you have to understand how difficult it is to arrive at the solution using this particular method so so that way you will be able to appreciate that method much better now again going ahead let's introduce a frequency ratio given by r r is my ratio of forcing frequency to that of my natural frequency now if we solve the above set um, equation then we will finally arrive at the values for the constants which are given as c1 will be 2 zeta r divided by 1 minus r square whole square plus 2 zeta r whole square times our delta static so this will be the value for c1 now let's write what will be the value of c2 similarly c2 will be given by 1 minus r square and times delta static again then 1 minus r square whole square plus 2 zeta r whole square now we assume that x is c1 sine omega t plus c2 cos omega t 
now if we plug these values back sorry this should be cos omega t now if we plug these values back then x should be given by i will take whatever is common delta static divided by we have to be careful because most of the times i have seen my friends including me losing marks for neglecting this square this is something we always forget i will put an emphasis on this uh, when we are solving problems but at this time itself always remember that there's a square and then we are taking the square of this term so always be careful about the equations that we write then 2 zeta r whole square times simple now things are simple we have a 2 zeta r hmm, sine omega t then we have a 1 minus r square cos omega t finally finally now we have an equation for our x of t and as we predicted in the beginning it is function of your system parameters because your system parameters are coming here in r because r is omega by omega and omega is the forcing frequency so it depends on your forcing frequency as well then it depends upon the stiffness because delta static is um, if I, you want me to write delta static it is given by f0 divided by k so this will give you the static deflection so my displacement is a is a function of it depends upon the magnitude of the excitation and the stiffness in the system so makes sense so this is the final equation which will give us the response of the system now we need to physically appreciate this which we will do in the next video thanks a lot